Hi everyone, welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley. I'm the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. And today we're starting on a two-part series on fact-checking photos and videos. So we're going to start with part one, which is fact-checking images. I've got a list of the tools we're going to cover today listed here. So if you want to pause it and open them up, you can. Uh, they're listed too in the description for this video. Uh, so you can just go in and click on them and open them up. I also have uh, part two listed here, which are the uh, fact-checking videos portion of the training. Uh, that uh, will be on a separate video, uh, but we'll have them listed in a playlist so you can uh, go through all of them at once. Um, so let's start with Google Image Search, and I'm just gonna show you real quickly the Google Image Search interface. It's images.google.com or google.com slash images. Uh, most of you have probably been here before and have uh, you know uh, searched for an image or something like that. But I wanted to show you a few things that you can look up here. Um, let's look for uh, Mount Rushmore. It's been in the news lately. Trump's speech there. And here it lists all these photos of Mount Rushmore. Um, I can click on the little tools button up here. It's right underneath a magnifying glass. And it lists in a little pull down menu ways to narrow your search. So if you want to search for, you know, only pictures of Mount Rushmore in the past year, you can narrow it down. Or if I wanted to look at a certain file type, you know, clip art, line drawing, maybe a, 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 a GIF file of some kind. Um, color, if I only was looking for photos that had more of a yellow tint to them, uh, only a certain size, large, medium, or icon sized photo. Um, or usage rights, and this is the big one. Uh, labeled for reuse with modification is the most liberal of all the uh, search uh, uh, filters on here. Those are photos that you could take and reuse, edit them, uh, you know, uh, modify them any way you wish, uh, and use them on your website without uh, any risk of getting sued. So uh, that is a big, big filter right here. A um, little more restrictions, you know, with label for reuse or label for non-commercial reuse. Um, but, you know, anything that's labeled for reuse with modification you can uh, use in here. It's a good thing if you're teaching students how to find rights-free images, you know, if you're showing them creativecommons.org or stock photos, things like that. Uh, this is another place, to, good place to go and have them look and, and filter and look for them. But for fact-checking purposes, uh, Google Images will allow you uh, to drag and drop or right click on a photo uh, to select Google reverse image search. So, you know, let's say somebody sent me a photo of something and I wanted to see if where that photo's appeared online and, and maybe when it was and, you know, uh, it might help me figure out if this photo is real or not. So, here's a photo of a giant beach ball rolling wild through the streets of London and uh, chasing cars and small ch children. It appears to be a rainstorm. Uh, one thing I always do with my students when I'm doing this training is, uh, you know, how many of you think this photo is real? And only a couple of hands go up. Most of us are pretty cynical. This looks like this, this photo could be doctored because after all, how many times do you see a giant beach ball rolling down the streets of London? So, to fact check this, if it was online, I could just right click on it. But since I've got it on my desktop here, I'll just drag it down into Google Image Search. And once it pops up, we're going to do a couple of these photos. But once this pops up, uh, it gives me terms that it thinks uh, people are using to search to find this photo. If it said fake photo of or something like that, you know, you, right away you could be a little suspicious of it. It also shows visually similar images. Um, which is important because it shows your photo here. Here's another shot of it cropped a little tighter. Here's a giant beach ball that appears, appears to have died a slow death in a pool of water right behind those same buildings. Uh, here's another one. You know, we don't know how these are related, but we could click on them and look. But at least that's kind of an encouraging sign that this photo might be real because there's other angles and other shots of this beach ball. Um, that's uh, rolling along. And you know, typically when somebody sends you a photo from a news story, uh, or from a news event, uh, you're going to you know, not just see that photo if you're reverse image search, you're going to see other angles of it. You know, if it's a fire in downtown Chicago, uh, you're going to see multiple photos of that fire being shared. So uh, that's a good thing to look for. But here's another thing that shows up. I don't even have to use the time drop down menu here. I could you know, check and see if it appeared before the date that this 
uh, beach ball was supposedly rolling around the streets. But you know, if we look right here, and this is a few years old, uh, several articles from The Guardian, The Independent, uh, if you get down here, The Metro, The Mirror, um, all news stories with the photo uh, quoting uh, police and other officials about how this uh, rainstorm and windstorm blew this giant beach ball off of its supports uh, and is rolling wild through the streets of London. It's a real photo, uh, even though it appears at, at uh, uh, you know, uh, top level to be uh, fake, but it is a real photo, and this is the uh, beach ball before it uh, 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 broke loose and, and ran wild. So um, it, uh, you know, it's an important thing to always fact check these because you never know what you're going to learn. You know, this is a real photo, whereas, you know, uh, it looks at first glance not to be real. I'm going to show you another photo, and this is the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, this is a photo from the Hurricane Sandy Street Shark from several years ago. Um, this uh, shark's been photoshopped in here and uh, it's supposedly swimming down, swimming down the streets of New Jersey. Uh, this also showed up during Hurricane Michael, uh, during Hurricane Harvey, uh, just about any uh, hurricane that hits, people are sharing this on social media. Um, so, you know, these fact checking tools are really important for your social media desk to be able to fact check uh, the images and see, you know, if they're real or not. Because people will send you fake stuff all the time. I see them in my Facebook feed all the time. So, it's important to take a look at them. Here I've dragged in my photo of the, Austra or the street shark, and this one's Australia sharks in street. Um, and uh, as I scroll down here, there's other fake uh, uh, shark photos, another real popular one swimming through the streets of Los Angeles, supposedly. Um, as you get down here, you know, um, fake Hurricane Sandy pics, uh, you'll start seeing stuff in here. You know, look at the source uh, of the photo, too. You know, if it's showing up with Snopes and things like verificationhandbook.com, uh, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, and other places though, that, you know, that uh, fact check, you know, that's a pretty good flag right there. Or, or you know, go in and open up and read the stories a little bit. Um, but this just shows you real quick, um, you know, how effective a, a quick reverse image search can be uh, to save you a lot of time and pain uh, if you do uh, wind up uh, deciding whether or not you want to share a photo or not that you're unsure of the source it comes from. You know, if it's a trusted source that you know, um, or the person you know can verify the images for you. You know you can vet them a little bit. Um, that's uh, another way to confirm them too. Um, Tinai uh, is another reverse image search tool. Tinai.com. Um, it uh, has a little upload arrow here, or you can cut and paste a, a web address in here of your photo. It should end in .pig .pn uh, .jpg uh, .png or .gif. Uh, and you can just cut and paste them in here and hit return. I usually use this as my backup search. It runs a little different algorithm than Google's does, so if I don't get results in Google, sometimes I'll get the result uh, in Tinai. Now, there's another tool that you can use. Let's say you know nothing showed up in Google or you know Tinai, uh, and you need to use Photo Forensics. Um, PhotoForensics.com and note it misspells photo F O T O. Um, this tool is a little more techy. Um, it's used qu quite widely by photo editors. There's a tutorial right here on the home page. It takes about 10 minutes to get through. Um, it's, like I say, a little more uh, involved in you know, uh, layers and things like that. But here's a couple little tricks to use it for a quick fact check. So I'm going to upload my uh, fake shark photo here that we know, you know the shark's been layered in there. Um, so let me go down and grab it here. I'll upload it. I've got it loaded. Now I'll hit upload file and it'll import the image and give me a little toolbar down the left hand side. So there you can see the image and the pixels and everything. It really breaks down the metadata of the photo. That's the information that's embedded into the photo. That if you haven't photoshopped, you can go to file, file info. It'll say what you know camera was used to shoot the photo. Typically has the author's name, things like that. So we can find metadata over here in our little toolbar on the left here. So I'll hit metadata. Doesn't give me much. Uh, it uh, you know pretty empty photo uh, here. It said you know it said it was created in Photoshop CS6. So that's pretty uh, old software, but you know we don't really have any uh, useful data in here. But here's another tool that you can use. It's called JPEG Percentage, JPG Percentage. And again, uh, the uh, little tutorial goes over this. That anytime you see in luminance and chrominance here, 
you see a number repeat itself many times, like you see with this 31. That is always a red flag. That means that photo has been opened and layered and closed uh, and resaved, meaning that this image was layered in, this uh, shark was layered in over the top of another photo, flattened as a JPEG photo, uh, and uh, that's the result. And again, the tutorial goes into the details of what these numbers actually mean. But anytime you see a repetitive number like this, it repeats a bunch of times. Um, you know, you'll see four, five, and six appear occasionally here. But anytime you see this mass, you know, uh, repetition, uh, that is a red flag to know that this photo has been layered. And, and news photos should never be layered. Uh, that means you're putting uh, one part of the photo on top of another, and, and that's a big red flag in, in uh, photo editing circles. So um, that's a, a real big one there. Uh, with photo forensics. Real handy little tool, very, very easy to use. Um, the last tool I wanted to talk to you about uh, is the verification handbook. Uh, and this is a great little tool um, in that you, if you're teaching maybe and you want to show uh, your students how to uh, research uh, different tools for uh, editing uh, or for tracking photos or tracking disinformation. All the chapters are up here. It's free. It's uh, actually part of datajournalism.com, the data journalism handbook. Um, you scroll down here, and you've got an introduction. Uh, you got several categories here uh, and chapters. This is written for journalists, by journalists. It even tells you how long the read is here, uh, which is really nice. Um, so, you know, short chapters, you can get through this in a couple hours. For those of you who are college professors, require your students to, public, uh, to read this. Uh, uh, throughout the semester. It's required reading in all of my courses. Um, also, uh, if you're uh, a hiring manager in a newsroom, before you let anybody touch your social media accounts, require them to sit down and read this book. Not all J schools require, require everyone to, to read this. Uh, you can also find the older version of this book at verificationhandbook.com, uh, but this one at the datajournalism.com website is the most current. You can buy a hardbound version of it, uh, but they put the chapters up here for free for you to read as well. Um, excellent, excellent book. Um, also wanted to mention my website, journalisttoolbox.org. Um, it is housed at the Society of Professional Journalists at spj.org. Journalist Toolbox is uh, uh, a 24-year-old website uh, that is a repository of all things digital and data journalism. Um, we've got all kinds of resources up here ranging from public records to trust and verification tools. Uh, many of the tools I just showed you up here in the trust and verification section that has two parts, uh, fact-checking resources and also a page of links that help you check domain names to see who created a website. So I'll click on this fact-checking resources page here. And as you scroll down, it's got recent updates, you know, new fact-checking tools added. Uh, and there's many, many others here. Uh, listed as well. Many things from First Draft News and others. Uh, we've got some training videos up here on, on fact checking uh, various things, uh, you know, uh, including this video uh, appears up there as well. Um, so that is journalisttoolbox.org. So that's it for our first part of this series. Uh, this is chapter one, uh, fact checking photos. We're going to get into video fact checking in our next video. It should be up on the playlist or you can visit it at journalisttoolbox.org. All of our training videos are up here on the right-hand side. It'll take you to our YouTube channel, and you can find all the videos right there. All right. Thank you much, guys. We'll see you soon.